Welcome back to the narrative. Continuing my conversation now with Ruggles Ferguson, King's Counsel. Welcome back. But let me ask you, what about previous convictions? Because in the case of Ron Mitchell, he has a long list, including not just charges, but I believe convictions as well, um, and seems to be allegedly the mastermind of all of this that happened there. But um, And so when, when we look at his, the list of things that he's been invo allegedly involved in, and some of it's convictions, so um, a, a court, a competent court, finding him guilty on some of those matters. But that, in that circumstance, it makes you wonder you know, really, should a closer eye be given on, on who gets bail? Because I would, I personally, I was surprised that he was given bail, given um, the kind of citizen that he is being. But right. pre previous yeah. convictions don't, 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 how heavily do they weigh? Yes. Determining? Yes, previous convictions do. And so it's also a factor to be taken into consideration. I can't and won't comment because I'm not familiar with the particular circumstances, what was presented to the court. But what I can say is the fact of previous convictions, one, and two, the fact of being on bail, pending trial for another offense, and in particular, another similar offense, are material factors to be taken into consideration when granted bail. So it, it is really the prosecution has to be responsible and defense counsel also must be responsible as officers of the court when these applications are being made. Defense counsel, of course, has a role to play and uh, defense counsels. So that's the nature of the system and that's what keeps the system in check. It's an adversarial system and you have the prosecution which represents the interests of the state, the interests of the public, and you have the defense counsel. Defense counsel represents the interests of the accused. And it's the role of defense counsel to fully represent the accused within the boundaries of the law. And uh, you know, whatever is favorable to bring it forth. But at the end of it all, you have in between defense counsel and prosecution, you have a judicial officer that makes the final determination. Now, on the issue of bail, though, we see now our, our uh, parliament pushing through legislation that will add another offense that is uh, not where you're not entitled to bail, um, the gun possession issues. That is going through the, the, the parliament, going through the system right now. It's not at the level of the governor general for a cent yet. But um, what do you make of that? Because, you know, we, we have... Well, I anticipate categories that, of, of offenses that you do not get bail on. Um, but now we're adding a third. What do you think of that? Well, I anticipate that that law will be challenged. Uh, once any, once you have a parliament, parliament legislating on things that you cannot do and uh, tie in the hands of a judicial officer, then you're talking about encroaching into another department or area of the state. You say you have three, three arms of the state, the executive responsible for, for policy making. If you, if you had to decide whether to build a national stadium or a general hospital, that's a policy issue. The court can come and say, build a hospital over a stadium that's not the court's function it will be intruding on the functions of the executive similarly the court can tell you know, you could advise but parliament is the legislative arm of the state is responsible for lawmaking but the court ultimately is responsible for interpreting the law and making judicial pronouncements in relation to matters before it. And if you have a situation where you take away the discretion of the, of the court entirely, and parliament says, even though a man is not tried yet, 
even though the constitution says a man is entitled to the presumption of innocence then you say listen you can't get bail so you will have to wait until this system that we have is ready to try him five years later and he languishes in prison five years on remand entitled to the presumption of innocence you see where i'm going even on in instances of murder and there was a recent um privy council decision on it that where for example trinidad that again you can't get bail for murder and there was a ruling um by the privy council the highest court on it and the basis is listen crimes take place under different circumstances and uh, the 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 issue even of the death penalty once where when somebody found guilty of murder that's it automatic imposition of the death penalty and then it, it was challenged constitutionally and said this is cruel and inhuman punishment because if you it's different if somebody comes into your house in the middle of the night to rob rob rapes kills that is different from if somebody attacks you and you're defending yourself and you probably use excessive force it's a killing in both instances but the circumstances are different and that's why the case of spence and hughes the cases of spence and hughes consolidated before the privy council um from st lucia and st vincent um upheld the eastern caribbean court of appeal decision to say that listen the imposition the automatic imposition of the death penalty uh, constitutes cruel and inhuman punishment you can't have the ultimate um life being taken without the opportunity to mitigate when even in a cost case you could mitigate mm -hmm. so it said listen it's wrong so that's what where the court comes in right to interpret so for example if we have a system that where you 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 can have you know trials so i'm just amazed my mind is blown at times when uh, uh you interface because i have opportunity to interface with several of these jurisdictions and you hear men <laughs> waiting in trial for trial 20 years on remand, people forget about them in the oh. prison, waiting trial, awaiting trial. And even in Grenada, where we might say that things are bad, it's not that bad as some jurisdictions. 15 years, 20 years. When in our jurisdiction, you take constitutional issues for delay, sometimes seven, eight years, people are waiting a trial. The constitution says fair, fair trial within a reasonable time. So I'm saying all of these things cannot be done in isolation because you have to fix the system to make it work efficiently so you have trials well within a reasonable time. So if you keep a man on remand, it's not for years, it's not for months because you have the evidence and you can come to court. So even though he's on remand, he's on remand for a short while. But if you... And but and, and let me say, and given given the state of our system where it's a slow grind to a, a, a decision in a case where you're charged and so now we have the parliament coming and saying if you if you get caught with a gun um, whatever you are not entitled to bail we're putting creating a situation where more people can be languishing on remand um, but you think but that's, that's the point gonna, that, that's not going to fly I I don't see. I don't see that being accepted by um, citizens or, and especially since gun crime is not really a crisis in Grenada. It seems like we had a few intense incidents, so people got worried. But right. We really do not have a problem with gun crime to the level of which um, the parliament will seek to um, deprive people of their liberty, even without a guilty verdict, which is where we seem to be going. Well, you see, and that's the point that's exactly the point because you know you can't have knee-jerk knee reactions to these things you have to strengthen capacity in different areas to make sure for example there are speedier trials 
so that you have a system that can accommodate certain things. So even though people are denied bail, because remember they are entitled to the presumption of innocence, so says the Constitution, not no individual. In fact, the Constitution says, what, um, the Supreme Law Clause of our Constitution says, this Constitution is supreme. And even though Parliament passes a law, that is inconsistent with the constitution, the court can strike down that law as being unconstitutional. So, so you have these checks and balances, but what I'm saying is that, you know, well, of course, the, the community, and when the community reacts, everybody wants to say things that are in line with the feelings of the community and you appease the community that way, right? That's one aspect of it, all well and good. But when you come now to the individual and somebody you now who's entitled to the presumption of innocence may be innocent and you say because that person is uh, charged with a certain offense and that person can't get bail. In other words, what you, what you are starting off with is the presumption of guilt. And then you're saying, which is the reverse onus that the constitution lays, and you're saying prove your innocence you prove your innocence you're caught with it you're guilty but there are ways to deal with it there are ways to deal with it that wouldn't now create these these problems because at the end of the day somebody languishes in prison because the trial is not being heard there are all these delays unreasonable delays and uh, what happens after you know like people always say if i'm found innocent I'm acquitted. Am I compensated? And the answer is no, it's not, it's not automatic so that you might, if you can establish a case of malicious prosecution, um, then that's different. But if it's just because you were on trial and you found not guilty and you spent 10 years in jail, then uh, there's no real recourse necessarily because there was due process. So that's why the system tends to, as people say, the system uh, is in a way as though the system is always protecting the accused. But the accused is the person who is charged and the accused is the one who faces consequences, adverse consequences as a result. And, you know, many judicial officers, I, I remember one or two in this jurisdiction a long time ago, um, saying, listen, it's better if 99 guilty men go free than an innocent man end up in jail, right? At the, at the end of it, uh, the system is designed with checks and balances. And what it does now, it forces the prosecution investigate properly. Don't, don't just charge somebody for charging sake or the public calling and whether or not you have the evidence, you say, boy, let's appease the public, let's just charge a man here. People will cool down. That man turns out to be an innocent man. Make sure the prosecution investigates properly and you then lay your charge. When you lay your charge, make sure that the accused person